Hey guys and welcome back on my channel. Today I am actually just coming out of the shower uh, from riding my bike in the morning so sorry my voice is a little bit gone. I uh, want to talk about physical training today uh, and why physical training is important for motorsport. You may tell me that you know we just sit in the car and we turn the wheel and we accelerate and we brake and why is it physical? Well well there is a lot of physicality behind it. Before everything if you like that type of video about behind the scenes of a driver's life and what we do please subscribe comment like as always so why do we train well we train to two things first thing is the g-forces what's g-forces g-forces is the load that you get on your body when you decelerate accelerate or turn the car you have to imagine that you're driving down the straight line in monza 340 kilometers an hour 200 and what is it, 210 miles you jump on the brake 110 meters uh, to get down to 55 kilometers an hour so you're losing almost 300 kilometers in 100 meters which is absolutely amazing. That is a lot of G-forces. You know, if you have a car and, and you brake as hard as you can in, on a normal road car, you won't even get to one G and everything flies in the car, right? In a Formula One car, you get to six on a big, big braking um, when you have maximum downforce. It's a, it's a touch less in Monza because there's less downforce in the cars, but on a big, uh, you know, sacred high downforce, you get to six Gs. So that's a lot of deceleration. So all that strength, neck, the neck wants to go forward. You know, your body is, is completely compressed forward. So you've got seat belts, yes, but you still have to hold yourself a little bit. And then you have high speed corners. So Barcelona turn three, you go in at 200, 50, 240, 250 kilometers an hour, flat out corners, very, very long. And ahead, there's two type of, well, there's one type of G-forces, but two most are working really hard. That's the right-hand side corner. So the right-hand side part of the neck is working super hard, not to have your head going completely on the left. And then on top of that, even though the seats are really well done in, in Formula 1 and, and molded to your back, you still slide uh, through through the seats. So your abs and lateral abdominals need to um, keep you in the car as well as your lats. So when you come back from uh, winter, you've been, you've been working really hard in the gym all winter long, but nothing is quite like racing. So you do struggle a little bit with those muscles initially. And, and that's, that's just fighting G-forces. In IndyCar, for example, we don't have a power steering wheel. So we're also fighting the wheel. And I don't know if you ever do even or try to park a car without a power steering wheel. It's almost easy compared to turning a steering wheel in IndyCar. Uh, so it is super, very heavy. I like it. I think mean, it's cool. Uh, it just adds a physical challenge to driving the car. So that's just, you know, the G-forces and the load, uh, the weight of the steering wheel. But then on top of that, you have to imagine that you stay in a racing car, in a cockpit, uh, where it's normally really hot, bloody hot. You've got a little bit of drink on board, but not that much, and it becomes very quickly very warm, so not that nice to drink. There's a lot of focus going on, you know. Focus to get the best reaction time at the start. Focus to be on top of your tools, uh, to be looking after your fuel number, to be looking after your tires, to be looking in your mirrors to see who is behind you. So there's a lot of that and even though you're just sitting on a race car because of the adrenaline, because of the risk involved in racing, your heart rate is very high. So I mentioned at the beginning of the video I was just back from a ride on my bike. I love riding bike because I can go out there for two hours, two and a half hours, three hours, changing intensity and that's what we do in racing, you know, a Grand Prix is an hour and a half to two hours and IndyCar race is a little bit longer. During that time you've got some paired with a safety car. So intensity comes down. There's pairs like the race star where intensity is at the highest. There's period where you attack and that's very high intensity. There's pairs where you maybe save fuel and tires. That's lower intensity. So having bike cycling is really good physical training for uh, adjusting all of that. And then in the gym, you know, we try to create exercise. So we've got that neck harness that you've seen a lot of drivers. If you're on my Instagram, you've seen me using it. Most boring exercise in the world. I mean, you stay there for two minutes on each side of your neck, two minutes per side. You've got four sides. So that eight minutes per round, you do three rounds, that's 24 minutes just sitting in front of a machine having cable pulling on your neck. That is that is really boring, really hard. And then, you know, for IndyCar, try to create, replicate the steering wheel effort, finding tools and which muscle works the most. And that's what we do through, through racing. You know, it, it's racing is very strange. We've got very little testing. So it's like you were telling uh, Rafael Nadal or Kylian Mbappe or whoever you want, sportsman you want, and just tell him that 
he's got like three days of testing, three days of practice in the year, and the rest will be only tournament, only matches. And you're not allowed to practice your sport the rest of the time. You have to try to find ways in the gym, uh, ways on the training to kind of replicate what you're gonna be suffering in the car. Um, so obviously karting is a big one to keep the muscle going, but it's still uh, quite different from racing cars. So that's that's one of the big challenges that we're facing as, as race car driver. That Formula 1 season finishing mid-November and late November starting again in March. The break is not that long. So, you know, you take a couple of weeks off and then you get back to training. So you never really lose 100% muscle. In IndyCar, we've got a, a six month break. So it's quite hard to uh, to keep it going, um, but that's what we have to do. And that's why every day I'm in the gym, um, every other day I'm on my bike. That's also what saved my life in Bahrain. 70 G-force deceleration crash, didn't lose conscience, didn't, you know, wasn't, was able to fight my way through um, the fire and, and escape from the car. And without that physical preparation, having my body would have just given up and, and I would never have been able to escape that fire. So that's also why we do a lot of our core work in case of high deceleration, big impact. Try to protect your organs, internal organs, because the G-forces have to go somewhere and everything is just, you know, feeling like you've been through a washing machine. We also do a lot of work with uh, reaction time, you know, light pods that you have to hit when they turn on and stuff like that to keep your eyes and, and hand and eyes coordination going. So you can also play squash, which is pretty good tennis. Uh, sports where you need to have a good spatial environment, have a good coordination between your eyes and your hands because that's what you do by racing. I was lucky to have a trainer for a lot of years in Formula One. I'm not training on my own in, in Miami so it's up to me to motivate myself and go to the gym but uh, it's not always easy I'm gonna be honest with you but I know that if I don't do it I won't perform so that's why I really try to go for it and make sure that there's no if I train better I would have won the race that will never go well with me and that's why I always go and train hard harder than it should actually. Once you've been doing your training, you're physically fit, then you need to be in the right mental space. You know, racing is a lot about the mental. Um, some days everything's gonna be easy, the car is gonna behave nicely, you know, find a way to drive it and it's just gonna be smooth. Some other days it's a little bit harder, some other days it doesn't work the way you want, you can't break as late as you would like. So you have to be very open-minded about how to drive the car, evolve through the race, and then diet, obviously eat well, um, you know, don't come hang over to a race, that won't go well, um, but eat well, make sure that you've got enough intakes in terms of carbs and proteins and vitamins and vegetables and all of that, and sleep. You know, I'm, I'm a big sleeper, I sleep pretty much 10 hours a night, which is beautiful, but also a pain in the ass. If you have to wake up at seven in the morning, that means by nine you need to be in bed, and it's also a, a bit annoying, but that's just the way I feel good. And if I don't do that sleep pattern, I'm just not feeling good and not performing well. So you have to know your body. You have to be very disciplined. In off season, you can enjoy a little bit more, but most of the time when we go racing, that's the way it is. And, and that's the way, personally, I just do it to perform well. And uh, you have to know your body, to know your head and know where you are. Same if you have exam at school. Same if you have, you know, big decision to make in your job whatsoever. Yes, that's what we do as race car drivers. Uh, as always, please, if you like that video, just subscribe like leave a comment i'll be happy to read them and i'll see you very soon for a new uh, a new one bye bye